G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series, and today I thought I'd just do a quick video. I'm not going to prattle on for too long, but just keep you guys and girls up to date with what's actually happening here at Seriously Series because we've got some big developments that should hopefully be coming your way over the next couple of months. So if you want to find out this and more and you're new to the channel, then you know exactly what to do. Click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too, but most importantly, well, you know what to do. Stay tuned. nice to be back out bush with the Series 2. I've been away from the Series 2 for a month and I've had to drive the other land derivative, I won't say the, the last part of it, um, and it wasn't a proper one. You know, if that was a 40 Series or a 45 Series, I'd be very, very content and very happy, but it's the more newer derivative, which, um, yeah, they're, they're just not the same. You just can't can't compare to a series Land Rover. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So, I just wanted to take the time to give a bit of an update as to what's happening to um, Seriously Series, not just on YouTube, but obviously off YouTube. And uh, we've had some big developments, and I've had to do a lot of, I guess, uh, contemplating and thinking about as to the future of Seriously Series and what's going to happen. Um, we, I guess, it's hard to put it into words, so please bear with me here. Um, but we had quite an ambitious, or I, I didn't think it was that ambitious, but maybe in retrospect it was. Uh, we had a film tour, uh, which many of you saw on the channel, uh, where we road showed Road to Ruin around the southwest of WA. And I won't dwell on it too long, but it, it was a great experience as always. Um, we thoroughly enjoy, you know, getting out and meeting people, meeting people who've, you know, watched our videos um, and, and they share their stories and their knowledge and all the rest and it's just a nice exchange of information and I guess war stories and all the rest and for me that's, you know, that's a real highlight. So uh, that was fantastic. Uh, meeting a number of individuals who had followed us on YouTube for quite a while and were very excited to see the film and uh, came along. We had uh, one gentleman and he I think he'd driven sort of four and a half, five hours to actually come and see the film. And I was uh, blown away with that dedication. That was just top stuff. But even with all that, you know, I guess great camaraderie, uh, there was a bit of a, a dagger hanging over my head. And that was COVID. Um, sadly, COVID, I think, had a big effect on the film had a big effect on the turnout to the film, more importantly. And that in turn meant that we didn't really make any money out of it. We actually lost money. Uh, but we wanted to do it, I wanted to do it, I wanted to get it out to those of you who've been very supportive uh, of the channel and of myself and Damon, you know, pursuing this avenue, this, this dream that we have, and, uh, you know, meeting meeting those individuals really really made up for the the shortcomings uh, but one of the driving forces to do the film tour was to generate funds I know people don't like talking about money but it is a business seriously series and it was about making money so then we could reinvest that money into I guess developing Road to Ruin the film uh, further in particularly trying to get it out to you guys and girls so, as you know, I, I think I've mentioned we're going through the process with iTunes, which is a very lengthy process, and uh, Damon's doing most of the work with that, and he's doing a great job. I know he's pulling his hair out at times, but he's, he's doing all the legwork, and he's making it happen like a true trooper that he is. But that obviously costs quite a bit of money. It's around about sort of $1,500 just to get it onto um, 
iTunes. And then many people have commented and said, you know, are you going to be bringing it out on DVD? And I would love to. I would love to do a little special edition DVD and maybe it comes in a little green ammo box and you get a spare fuel filter or oil filter for your Land Rover Series 2A or 3. I think that'd be great. But the problem is money again. Uh, it's two and a half thousand dollars to get all the software and menus and all the rest done for, for DVD and then that's fine we don't mind paying paying that or trying to find the funds to do that but then we've got the issue of actually selling the DVD because we need to distribute it so that becomes prob problematic because you know at the end of the day you've got to break even so many of you might exclaim and say oh well you know just go along to heaps of four-wheel drive shows and sell them there and look I'm sure they'd sell like hotcakes um, but getting to four-wheel drive shows is is another problem uh, that costs money too uh, fuel prices have gone through the roof as you know uh, we then got to pay for accommodation and this is really shocking um, we actually eat food so we've got to pay for food I know they think everyone thinks artists just live on inspiration and hot air but um, not not this one um, so that that's a problem Netflix is three and a half thousand dollars to to basically get the file prepared to then go to Netflix and say hey mate do you want to buy it um, so you know that costs quite a bit of money the other um, thing that we were hoping to do with the revenue was to put it into looking at doing the canning stock route again um, or at least starting off where we finished you know a few years ago uh, because we do want to do that now we've sort of gotten over the fact of what happened with Road to Ruin and as many of you will see in the coming months um, it was a true grit adventure like no other um, so it's taken us a while just to process it all but uh, Damon and myself have come around to the fact that we are going to do it um, as many of you know the canning stock route isn't open at this stage the communities are but the actual track itself isn't uh, and that's fine we're not in any big rush you know um, it just gives us more time to refine the Land Rovers for the trip but getting back to what I was saying before that's really what the funds were, were going to be um, for that we would have generated from the film tour but sadly um, as I said we ended up losing money on it uh, and the reason why this has been quite difficult is the the showings of Road to Ruin have been a great success. They have been fantastic. I've been blown away by it. Um, you know, every time we've showed the film, it's basically been a near sellout or pretty much a sellout. Um, so I sort of, you know, I, I try and be very, very humble and not egotistical. And I sort of said to myself, right, well, we usually fill the cinema up by 90, 95%. Let's say, we aim for 50 percent but uh, with the three cinemas that we showed the film at that, that didn't even happen I think the best we got was 53 people at Bustleton so it was uh, very disappointing and so because we didn't generate the funds out of it as I've already talked about um, I've I guess had a bit of an epiphany I was feeling a bit down in the dumps and I thought, how on earth can we get it out to you guys and girls? How can we get it out to those people who have just been so patient, so awesome, and just really, really want to see this film? And I thought, well, the cinema showings are too risky financially. We don't have the finance to back it up um, uh, for that. And I can't fly to Adelaide or Sydney or Brisbane or Melbourne because... By the time I pay for those flights, or even if I drive there, um, there's basically going to be no profit left. Uh, so, not a waste of time, but we're trying to run this as a business, so it's not really beneficial. So, I thought, well, COVID's not that bad now. It's not great, but it's not that bad. And so, I started having a look at film festivals. And because COVID, is slowly weaning off in other parts of the world uh, the international film festivals are coming back and that's originally what Road to Ruin 
was edited for. So what I've done is I've entered Road to Ruin into 14 different film festivals. And what I'll do is I'll just put, put credits down below and you can see the film festivals as they come, come out. Uh, because I, I, some of them I can't even pronounce. Um, my, my French isn't that good. So we're basically going to roadshow it around the world. Um, we're not going to get to every country, obviously. We, we just can't, and financially we, we just can't afford it. Um, those 14 film festivals cost $350 uh, Australian all up, uh, which is, I think, very, very good uh, bang for your buck. And when you're there, or if you go to the film festival and watch Road to Ruin, just think in the back of your mind, say thank you to all of those who have supported us via PayPal and Patreon, because they're the ones that paid to get the film produced, they're the ones that actually paid to get the film entered into these film festivals. Now, obviously we want to show the film to, to you guys and girls, but the other reason why we've decided to do these film festivals is it's great exposure for Seriously Series and for Road to Ruin. And we hope, and I certainly think it's highly possible because it's a cracker of a film, that we should hopefully win a few awards along the way. And that adds greater prestige to the film. And basically, when you win awards and you win trophies, people listen to you. That's basically it. Because I've approached dozens of distribution companies and they're like, yeah, nah, oh, it's a good film, but yeah, nah, not sure. Yeah, just, just, just not sure. And it's not their fault, it's because the film is, it is very different. Um, it does push the, the genre. It's not a typical all-for-adventure film with blokes who've somehow, I don't know, they've lost their sleeves off their shirts, like, I don't know how that happens. And every bump, it's a chance to crack open a beer. So it's not like that. But then at the other side of things, it's not an art house film either. So it's kind of something in the middle there. And it is it is a factual documentary, but also it's almost a little bit of a drama too. So it's got a number of different genres sort of mixed all into one. Um, and finding people who can sort of understand that, people who can appreciate what it's like to actually travel in remote areas, because most people in Australia have no idea. And I'm not being cruel to people, it's a fact, they have no idea. Um, you know, I live in Kalgoorlie, I talk to people in Perth and they still think there's Aboriginal tribes roaming round out here, spearing kangaroos and living off the land. It's, and they do that full time. No, that, that hasn't happened in decades. So people have got no idea. So it's quite hard trying to orchestrate and communicate that to actually um, someone. And then the other problem is using these vehicles. Um, because they're not probably sexy vehicles, like a lot of the um, shiny trucks and all the rest of, I guess, modern B would explore us today, that sort of, people don't understand, why don't you drive a new vehicle? And you're like, well, I really don't want to get into debt and these are better. So, so anyway, that's prattled on a bit there, sorry about that. but. It's been an interesting and frustrating experience. And so the other thing is we've really got to, and I'm out here actually filming for Patreon at the moment. Um, we really do need your support more than ever. More than ever. Um, YouTube for us has never been the primary focus. Uh, it, it's always been something that we've worked very hard on. It's something that we've always tried to do the best possible videos we could um, with a very restricted time frame. You know, Damon and myself both have young families. We, um, you know, I, I'm lucky enough that I can sort of work almost part time, uh, but Damon's working full time. So, you know, that that puts an extra level level of complexity into it. And. As much as I would love to, and, and Damon would, we would love to do this full time, and that is our ultimate goal, and that's why we're pursuing 
road to ruin and that's why we're pursuing other avenues with magazine articles and columns and working with voluntary organisations, working with uh, commercial companies and entities to really try and um, refine this niche that we've sort of found with these vehicles and with the audience that we have here particularly on YouTube. But um, Patreon is really what makes this this business or this franchise, film franchise, tick. And you know, f for everyone who's supported us on Patreon and some people will do it for a couple of months and then they'll go, hey Jeff, lost my job, can't do it anymore. Not a problem at all. Absolute legend. Thank you for taking the time to do it. But it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, you know, that pays for all our subscription costs for editing software, making thumbnails. Um, you know, we actually subscribe or pay a subscription to a music software gallery so we can actually give you guys and girls nice music to listen to instead of it's just my preference but electro trash which most videos have these days because it's free and no one has to play an instrument so you know we try and do that to try and just make these videos just a bit more appealing and to make them a video that you know on a quiet sunday afternoon when it's raining outside or it's too hot you can just sit down and just escape with Jeff and Damon on a nice adventure out in the middle of nowhere that you've got no idea where they're going, but it's just a great adventure. That's what we're sort of trying to do. And Patreon allows, or, or, or the money that we make from YouTube, allows us to pay for those running costs. But after those running costs, we've basically got nothing left. And that's where Patreon comes in. And Patreon, we don't earn mega bucks on it, but we, we earn money from it and the fact that we're earning any is just fantastic. But that primarily pays for the fuel to allow us to be able to go out and produce these adventure documentaries, particularly the ones for Edge of the Earth and Golden Quest and other things like obviously the, the films that you saw or the videos that I put up for the Southwest Film Tour. So that, that makes a big, big difference there. But other than sort of helping to pay for some of it, not all of the fuel costs, it really doesn't leave us with much else. So because we've lost that revenue with the film showings at this point, it means that we're probably going to have to scale back things a little bit adventure-wise moving on from here, uh, simply because we have got great supporters, but we need more support. And I don't try and prattle on at the end of the videos asking people to click on the Patreon icon for nothing. Um, the reason is, as I've said, we don't earn much money from YouTube. Um, we earn, to be honest, we earn probably $70 to $90 a month. And as I said, that pays for all the subscription costs, uh, the bank fees and all the rest. Um, and we're not a high grossing YouTube channel. I don't think we ever will be. Um, you know, Damon and I crossed that bridge and realised that years ago. Um, you know, we don't drive la fancy Land Cruisers. We don't, you know, wear shirts that the sleeves have fold off. Um, it's just not who we are, and we're not going to change or um, debase ourselves. Probably not the right term um, to become that, because the whole point of setting up this channel in the first place was to produce videos that we ourselves wanted to see and we ourselves knew weren't out there on YouTube. And I think that's probably why 90% of you have, have subscribed to the channel. So anyway, so as always, if you've been following the channel for a while and you know you like what we do and maybe we've helped you out fixing your Land Rover with questions on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, um, you know, take five minutes, not even that, two minutes, and just click on that Patreon icon. Um, links pop up in the video, every video basically. Um, have a look at it, see what you can do. Um, at the moment, we're not charging mega bucks. We never do. We try and keep our rates really low. And to be honest, for the even for the mid-tier, um, it's cheaper than Netflix, Stan, Hulu, um, Amazon Prime. It's the cheapest online streaming service you're ever going to get. 
and it's cheaper than a pint of beer and a cup of coffee. So, what are you waiting for? But anyway, thank you very much for your support. Once again, I'm sorry if I waffled on and prattled on a little bit, but we got there in the end. And thank you very much for making it to the end of the video. Anyway, thanks again for all your support. For those of you who regularly comment on the channel, it's really nice to uh, have a great online community of just awesome individuals. And for uh, all of you who've subscribed to the channel, given a thumbs up on our videos, it makes a huge, huge difference. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in our next video.